there are many individual reasons why someone wants to join terrorism. So many of these individuals um, don't feel part of Australian society. They, they feel that they've been alienated from, from Australian society. They don't trust Australian authorities. They think that the government um, is overly focusing on the Muslim community. IS has a, um, a very uh, good media strategy. They're one of the best at using social media and internet to recruit others. Um, even the recent uh, video of the beheading of James Foley was, was a classic example. I think this video had a number of messages, but one of them was um, uh, uh, to encourage others to join. Now, that might sound crazy, such a brutal video, but they were showing that, that we finally can get our one up against the West. The West have been the, the oppressors of the, Mus the Muslim world over, over generations. Um, uh, we've seen the atrocities against our Muslim brothers in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, now we can get one back at, at the West. I, I always get concerned that there's a lot of attention and focus on, on, on uh, terrorism has been very religiously focused and blamed it on, on um, Islam. Um, but really, in this case, I think you know, religion has been hijacked to a great extent and there are a lot of underlying causes um, getting these, these people involved in terrorism overseas. Some of these guys are going straight into fighting without any training whatsoever. Um, in the past we did see training camps in Pakistan and uh, border regions of Afghanistan or uh, uh, training camps in the Philippines, training camps in Indonesia um, where uh, individuals would go through uh, combat training um, prior to going over um, to join the conflict. The, uh, things that we really need to consider a lot harder is uh, what are we going to do with these foreign fighters when they turn uh, to Australia. Um, I think many of these fighters, those that have uh, um, breached or broken Australian law, whether the new legislation or the, pre the existing uh, legislation, um, many of those will probably enter the judicial system and some will be uh, convicted. Those that have broken the law will be on remand for a period of time. So, you know, how do we house these inmates? What, uh, what, how are we going to look after them? How are we going to try and uh, change these inmates if we can? Um, so there'll be sort of uh, intervention programs um, to try and turn them away from uh, terrorism. We've already seen that our existing strategies uh, in prison haven't worked. Khalid Sharif, for example, um, spent um, time in prison, and we've seen that he has been he has left prison and gone on to gone straight back into terrorism, or over a period of time back into terrorism. So obviously, we're not doing the right thing. My suggestion and some of my research would suggest that inmates, terrorist inmates, are better off with mainstream prison population rather than actually being isolated or segregated from other inmates. Um, inmate culture is a very strong influence and there are inmate subgroups and, uh, within prison that can influence uh, inmates. Whether they come out better criminals or whether they come out uh, terrorists is another matter and that's to be seen, but um, I would suggest um, uh, there's less chance of terrorist recidivism if they're in the mainstream prison population.